Okay, you want to count or sum checked checkboxes in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to show you two methods. First method, perfect for you if you've only got, say, 10 to 20 checkboxes. If you've got a lot more, if you've got hundreds, you'll want to use the second method. Okay, let's look at the first method. Now, these checkboxes here I've inserted via the Developer tab. If you cannot see the Developer tab on your ribbon, you need to right click on one of the other tabs, customize the ribbon, and then make sure Developer is ticked in this list here. On the Developer tab, go to the Insert button, and you can use this checkbox here under Form Controls. What you would do is you'd click on it and then click where you want the checkbox to appear and then you can reposition it. Now I haven't used any text alongside my checkbox, so I can just get rid of that text. What you will need to do is right click on your checkbox, go to Format Control and link the checkbox to a cell. So you click in this cell link box here and then select a cell. I'm going to say the cell adjacent D11. And you'll see how this works. So now if I tick that box, you can see I get a true in this cell that I've linked to. And if I untick it, I get a false. To add up the ticked check boxes, let's just tick, say, three of them. What you would do is you'd use the count if function. The range would be the range of cells that you've linked to your checkboxes and your criteria would be true. So you can see it's counted that there are three checked checkboxes. If I tick another checkbox, it would increase the count to four. Now, if you wanted to sum up corresponding values based on ticked checkboxes, you could use sum if. So my range would be the linked cells, my criteria would be true, and my sum range would be the corresponding values that you want to add up. So if I tick this checkbox up here, you can see it increases the total weight. Now, if you don't want these true and false values to show, what you can do is select those cells, control one on your keyboard, that opens up the Format Cells dialog box. Go down to Custom. And then in the Type box, just type three semicolons. And that will hide those true and false values. Now, the only problem with this method is it's quite laborious inserting these controls. And if you need hundreds and hundreds of checkboxes in your spreadsheet, then it's going to be very time consuming. So let's look at the second method. So the first thing I want to show you relating to this method is that we can return checkboxes using the character function. So if I type equals character 254, that isn't a checkbox, but if I change the font to wingdings, you can see I get a checked checkbox. Equally, if I type character 168 and format the cell with the wingdings font, I get an unchecked checkbox. Now the benefit of using this way of creating checkboxes is that I can very easily just copy the checkboxes down into other cells. So if you need many checkboxes, this is a much easier way of generating them. Now the way this method will work is that when you double click on a checkbox, it will either change to its ticked state or unticked state. And to do this, we have to use a little bit of VBA code. Now I've provided a link to the VBA code in the description of this video. So copy that code, then right click on your sheet tab and go to view code. Then up here where it says general, change that to worksheet. And where it says selection change, change that to before double click. Then you can get rid of these last two lines of code. Then paste in the code that I provided between these two remaining lines of code. Right, I'll just close down the Project Explorer and widen this Visual Basic Editor window. So I'm going to explain how this sub-procedure works. 
this macro is going to be triggered using the before double click event. So every time we double click, it's going to run this code. Now there's two things you need to know about the double click event. You've got target, which is the cell that you've double clicked in. And you've also got cancel here, which prevents the cell entering edit mode. Now we only want to run this code if we've double clicked into the range C2 to C11. You can see that on my sheet here. That's where we have the checkboxes. So if we haven't double clicked into that range, then basically don't want this code to run at all. But if we have, we're then using this select case statement. And all we're doing is we're saying if the character in the cell that we've double clicked in is the ticked box, then change it to the unticked box. And then I'm saying cancel equals true. And that basically means that the cell doesn't go into edit mode. And then the opposite also needs to be true that if the cell contains an unchecked checkbox, it needs to be changed to a checked checkbox. So very simple bit of VBA code there. It works perfectly for our scenario. So if I double click in one of these checkboxes, it will untick them. And if I double click again on an empty checkbox, it ticks the checkbox. Now, how do I count the checked checkboxes when I'm using this method? equals count if the range is the cells that I've currently got the checkboxes in. And my criteria is character 254. So you can see that works. If I wanted to sum up corresponding weights, I would use sum if the range would be the range of cells that contain the checkboxes. My criteria, again, is character 254. And my sum range of the corresponding weights. And again, if I untick one of these checkboxes, it changes the result of the sum of weights. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.